Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight, we have a special guest with us. We have back on the program, Sakis Tolis of Rotting Christ. Welcome back to the show. Greetings there. This is Sakis from Rotting Christ, and we are healing, healing from Greece. So, recently you got back from the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. What was that experience like for you? This is an experience, <laughs> once in a life, lifetime experience. I'm very lucky that I was there because I couldn't afford it financially. <laughs> I'm very lucky that I sailed together with another 3,000 people there. Uh, in the middle of ocean, you know, people that we are sharing more or less the same feelings, the same ideas. Um, killer, killer bands, killer atmosphere, you know. Usually I'm, I'm getting a little bit miserable the last years because of too many t- travels. But this travel, this trip was really good. So if you have the chance, go ahead. You won't regret it. <laughs> so the last time that we talked was back in 2013. But before we talk about the new album, what's the story behind the Rotting Christ comic thing? Comic? What do you mean, comic? There's some Rotting Christ official comic where they have, um, like, your band. Yes, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> and one guy told me that he's preparing, he's currently preparing a comic. And uh, I don't know about the story about this. About, <laughs> you know, I just uh, read a little bit of the scenario. It's about, you know, kind of fights, you know, he takes the more... The, um, uh, the fighting air of the band, not that much the black metal, so it tried to make an ancient Greek uh, comic uh, with our band. I really look forward to see the result because I haven't seen it yet and I'm really curious. <laughs> from, from what I've seen also on their page with just the illustrations, it does look kind of interesting, so I'm, I'm kind of curious too. <laughs> I think so, I think so. Look forward for the result. Okay, so let's talk about the new album, Rituals, out now on Season of Mist. So, at the end of last year, there was an update made by the band stating, After more than a year of intense and deep esoteric search, we feel that we still have to reveal something out there. So, what is it that you feel that you need to reveal? You know something, any album I release, it's a kind of esoteric orgasm here. Mm -hmm. I'm the only composer, so I take, you know, any composition very seriously. (coughs) Sorry. Uh, It took me more than a year, you know, to search myself, to have a kind of meditation and to find out what is, if I have something to say out there. I found myself and I found the the sublime of devotion. I found something spiritualism, which is rituals. So I wrote a whole album about rituals. Rituals is an album with 10 songs, with 10 different rituals from all around the world. And I was going to ask about that too. I mean, did you, I mean, how did you go about studying all these different rituals from all around the world? I mean, did you just... I I like to study. You know, this is how I work actually. Mm -hmm. 15 albums and more than 200 songs in my career. I said, all right, let's try to work a little bit different. Not just taking the guitar and just waiting, you know, a good idea to record. You know, this is, I have done that too many times. This time I, I work a little bit different. Mm-hmm. First I, I read and then I grab the guitar. Mm-hmm. First I read history, I like to read history. I think, mm-hmm. my opinion, that there is knowledge, hidden knowledge all around the world, all around the civilizations uh, that is hidden and it's very useful for us, the modern people. So for me, I like to read. And I went ahead with something that is, my opinion, quite historical and, and quite spiritual uh, with this album. And you know, speaking of history that you like to do, the other song, Azenigmar, has been written and spoken in the language of Jesus Christ, right? Aramaic. Yes. Now, when, when did you learn to speak this language, and why did you feel it important to incorporate it in this particular song? You know something? I wanted to write the song about the seven last sentences of Jesus Christ on the cross. I said, all right, let's try something in English. English is not my mother tongue. 
Uh, I cannot speak that fluently. I cannot speak that uh, well. Also, you know, Aramaic, ancient Hebrew is not my language too. But mm -hmm. it was a challenge. It was a challenge just to read a little bit, to set uh, the files uh, around, and to come up with something that uh, it's quite um, unique and quite official. You can say it's something in English, but you know, I try to use the official language that makes the song a little bit more unique mm -hmm. and more official. Mm -hmm. It's very important for me to write something official. And it and it it just fits great with the song, like you were saying. It makes it more real exactly. in the time of when this song would have been written. Um, also, another thing. Using spoken word in metal music can be kind of tricky thing sometimes, and sometimes it ends up sounding a little corny. But on a voice like Thunder, you have Nick Holmes from Paradise Lost delivering a riveting spoken word piece. Then you have um, um, Vorf from Samael. Uh, also, how did you go about picking these people for these? spoken word parts in these songs. You know something, I write one song in French. Mm -hmm. I don't know French. Actually, I know a little bit of French, but <laughs> it's not my mother tongue too. I said to my friend, Bor from Samuel, right, are you going to join me? He accepted. And uh, the same with Nick Holmes. I write something with English literature about William Blake. No, I'm not English. My accent is not English. So I said, I also called, you know, my friend, mm -hmm. Nicole, to contribute there. You know, my my first goal was not to have a credit, just to have Nick Holmes in my albums. Mm -hmm. It's because, you know, they're, first of all, they're friends of mine. And second, I believe that their art, their, their talent can lift up my songs. You know, this is why I all, very often I use, uh, I use, you know, I, I contribute with friends. And I have many guests. I also have one guy from India. Mm -hmm. uh, I write something in Sanskrit. So I ask him to sing something in, the, in their official language. I had something in ancient Greek. I, I used, you know, ancient Greek tragedy. I asked, you know, an actress here, the man, Mrs. Danai, to contribute, you know, and to create something in ancient Greek tragedy. You know, this is what I'm trying to do with my music. I write music, but for me, lyrics and atmosphere it's also important. It's not only about riffs. riffs I have done 12 albums full of riffs. riffs. I, I wanted to do something different this time. And it's great. I mean, I have to say, I mean, all of the songs with everything that you have incorporated in them, like, you know, you were saying, you know, with Nick Holmes speaking the English literature parts, and it comes, it just fits so perfectly in the song. Like, I don't know how you had this vision, Sakis, but it really does. And it makes that song all the more powerful. I don't know what the word is, or or, or epic, or, or just fitting, you know, to have his accent, his reading in that particular song. And it, I don't know, for me, this particular album that you guys have done just stands out so much differently than everything you've done in the past, in a good way. I mean, all the other stuff is good, too, but it's just something, like, powerful, and, and I don't know if I want to say biblical, but that's what kind of comes to mind. Um, the, thank you very much. That your opinion counts on me, because you're experienced, and it's very important for me when... Uh, I hear from someone that our last album, our last creation, is maybe the best we have done. You know, some people, you know, don't care about bands that create, you know, for instance, the same stuff. They create uh, the, uh, the album number 13. They say, all right, it sounds exactly the same like the fifth album or the eighth album. Mm -hmm. Here, you know, I try to make step ups with my music. I'm very glad that some people out there can understand what I'm trying to do with the music. <laughs> Now, is there any particular song on this album that you believe delivers the strongest message? Uh, I can't say that. Actually, every song is, I feel that the album like my family. Mm -hmm. So I can choose one kid, you know, from the other. So I feel like, all right, even if I have some feelings, you know, for some songs, I won't say that because I create all of them. Mm -hmm. And... What have some of the early responses been to the album now that it's been out? Good and bad, but usually good. Uh, more often, often uh, good. I mean, the people, uh, this album has opened some uh, gates for the band. 
Uh, many people that didn't follow the band now they do uh, because it uh, concerning all the feedback I received it's very good they're very positive and they understand the, the concept of the album it's very important because the album is quite spiritual mm -hmm. in my opinion mm -hmm. and I'm very glad that some people out there can understand what I try to do and and now when you have this album out I mean you been touring already. You've been playing some of the new music already, right? On tour? Yes, some songs, but not. We are not based. Our new set list is not based in uh, this album. Some three songs, maybe, that's enough. Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, we have 13 albums, <laughs> almost 200 songs to play, you know, so it's a big nightmare for us. <laughs> At the time, we have to choose the set list. Now, what about touring now? I mean, are you going to do touring to follow the release up of this album? Of course, of course. As long as we are strong, we are will be on the road and spreading the ritual message all around the world. So next year is going to mark the 30-year anniversary of Rotting Christ. Now, what do you... It's kind of 29, 30, yes. <laughs> right. That's a long time. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> That's longer than some of the listeners have even been alive, Sakis. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. <laughs> so, are you guys are you guys planning on doing anything special on your on the thirty year? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> For the moment, you know, I'm not the person that celebrates. Um, I don't like celebration that much. So. Maybe we'll do something, but I don't have something planned. The th thing is that we are alive. Uh, more than a quarter of a century as a band. We are doing shows uh, all around the world. We have done more than 1,200 shows, please. Wow. And uh, I'm very glad that we are still here and always front line in the battlefield. So, so what do you attribute to the longevity of the band? Tribute? What do you mean? How, what do you attribute to the longevity of the band? I mean, how? what is it that you know, gives you that staying power. I like very much this way of life. Mm -hmm. Since I remember myself, I remember, you know, I was, since I was a kid, I was always looking for bands or for underground metal music. Uh, since the tape trading demos back in the days, mm -hmm. in, uh, until nowadays, I'm always here. I like this style of music. As I like this style of life. I'm also a traveler, I like to travel a lot, so I combine everything with, with a band, I can say that this give me this give me power. Sometimes I don't hide you, but they have some problems, you know, you know how it is, especially with your social life. Mm -hmm. When you have six months on the, on the road, you can understand that you have uh, many things to take care of back home. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I don't do it, you know, I cannot, uh, but you know, always keep on playing my music. Because this is the most important, this is my mission, I'm here on this earth. Now, with the new album, is what formats is it released on? As I, as I know, in the CD, mm -hmm. and the vinyl, of course. Vinyl is a very important thing for us. We are vinyl lovers, so they will be out in vinyl too. Now, where are the best places for people to learn more about what's going on with the band and to pick up merchandise? I have no idea about merchandising, maybe from our label, but we are currently working our, in our official uh, web store, uh, online store, mm -hmm. so soon we will reveal the news. All right, Sakis, I'm going to let you get going. I know it's kind of late, but thank you so much for coming on the show, telling us about the new Thanks. album, and, you know, best of everything to you and the band. Thank you very much, Zed. You guys, you must keep the spirit alive. It's very important, you know, you guys all around, from all around the world, we fight for our precious music and it's, it would be nice to be back in the States and to play for you. Until then, keep the spirit alive.